हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट्स पढ़ाएंगे सबको सिखाएंगे इस वीडियो में हम देखने वाले हैं कि मोनेटरी एग्रीगेट्स एम वन एम टू एम थ्री ये क्या होते हैं व्हाट आर मोनेटरी एग्रीगेट्स Welcome to I Exam B. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so that you do not miss any other video in the series of concepts. पढ़ाएंगे सबको सिखाएंगे. And also, if you have any queries, you can call on this number and email at this particular email ID for any kind of guidance that you require. So let's start the video. मोनेटरी एग्रीगेट्स एम जीरो एम वन एम टू एम थ्री एम फोर ये सब होते क्या है टोटल मनी सप्लाई होता है किसी भी इकोनॉमी में द टोटल सम ऑफ मनी दैट इज अवेलेबल जो पब्लिक के पास पैसा होता है उसको हम मनी सप्लाई कहते हैं और ये एक पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम में हम देखते हैं सो पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम मतलब आज इस वक्त इस टाइम पे वॉट इज द एक्चुअल मनी सप्लाई इन द इकोनॉमी सो ये एक स्टॉक कॉन्सेप्ट है ये एक फ्लो कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं है फ्लो कॉन्सेप्ट वो चीजें होती हैं जो आप एक ओवर द पीरियड देखते हो पीरियड ऑफ टाइम में देखते हो बट मनी सप्लाई आप मेजर करते हो एट अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ये जो मनी सप्लाई होता है ये हम रेफर करते हैं इट रेफर्स टू द अमाउंट ऑफ मनी हेल्ड बाय द पब्लिक पब्लिक में कौन आते हैं हाउस होल्ड फर्म इंस्टीट्यूशन सो दीज आर डो नॉट इंक्लूड बैंक एंड गवर्नमेंट सो बेसिकली दे डू नॉट इंक्लूड पीपल हु सप्लाई द मनी ओके आरबीआई गवर्नमेंट एंड कमर्शियल बैंक्स बिकॉज इफ दे ऑल्सो इंक्लूड दीज पीपल देन इट विल लीड टू डबल काउंटिंग आप दो बार काउंट कर रहे हो गए टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी दैट इज अवेलेबल इन द इकोनॉमी सो सप्लायर्स और प्रोड्यूसर्स ऑफ मनी को हम इंक्लूड नहीं करते हैं इट ओनली रेफर्स टू द अमाउंट विच इज विद द पब्लिक ओके दैट इज हाउस होल्ड फर्म एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड सिंस द गवर्नमेंट एंड द बैंक प्रोड्यूस और द क्रिएट मनी for use by the public so the money which is held by them it is not actually used for transaction purposes and speculative purposes so that's why they are excluded from the standard measures now the rationally why we consider money supply as being held by the public is that we want to separate the producers of money from those who actually use money to fulfill their various needs like the transactionary motive or the speculative purposes and money supply plays an important role in the determination of the price level that is the inflation in the economy and also the interest rates on deposits and loans how is this money supply measured so these are given by several monetary aggregates like m0 m1 m2 m3 and m4 so according to the standard concept of money supply hum kehte hain that it is composed of two things only the currency which is with the public and the demand deposits with the public so there are two components as with the standard concept of money supply but rbi the central bank measures the money supply through various indicators m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 so these we will look at what are these in detail so <clears throat> एम नॉट जो होता है दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द मोनिट्री बेस और द रिजर्व मनी दिस कंप्राइजेज ऑफ करेंसी इन सर्क्यूलेशन सो करेंसी इन सर्क्यूलेशन मीन्स नोट्स विच आर इन सर्क्यूलेशन रूपी कॉइन्स स्मॉल कॉइन्स विच इज इन सर्क्यूलेशन प्लस द बैंकर्स डिपॉजिट विद आर बी आई सो दिस इज द बैलेंसेज विच इज मेंटेन बाय बैंक इन द करेंट अकाउंट विद आर बी आई मेनली फॉर मेंटेनिंग द कैश रिजर्व रेशियो द सी आर आर and as working funds for clearing several adjustments so this includes the bankers deposits with the rbi and also other deposits with the rbi the deposits from foreign central banks multilateral institutions financial institutions and uh, sundry de uh, deposits net of imf account so this includes the other deposits all of these three together comprise of the monetary base m0 which is the reserve money now the other four measures of money supply are m1 m2 m3 and m4 so let's look at these in detail i will now present a 
uh, just one page snapshot of all the four monetary aggregates so that you can very easily uh, remember in the examination and you will never forget these four monetary aggregates and what it comprises of. So here is the table. Now when you look at this table M1 includes coins and currency with the public plus your demand deposits with the commercial bank and other deposits. So these three comprises of M1. Now demand deposits are your checkable deposits which includes your current account and the saving account. So M1 is a narrow measure of money supply and it includes currency with the public, demand deposits with the banking system and other deposits with the RBI. So demand deposits with the banking system means that the current deposits with the banking system and the demand liabilities portion of savings deposits with the banking system. And this M1 is compiled fortnightly and it is also called the narrow money measure. Next is your M2. M2 also includes coins and currency held with the public, demand deposits with the commercial banks as well as the post office savings banks and other deposits. So basically in other words it is M1 plus your demand deposits with the post office savings banks. M3 is also called the aggregate monetary resource or the broad money supply and it includes your coins and currency with the public, the demand deposits with the commercial banks and the time deposits with the commercial banks and other deposits held by public with the central bank. So this is M1 plus your time deposits held with the commercial banks. And M4, which is the broadest measure of money supply, includes all of these things, coins and currency with the public, demand and time deposits with the commercial banks, as well as the demand deposits and time deposits with the post office savings banks and other deposits held by public with the RB. So I hope just in this one table, all these different four monetary aggregates will be clear to you. And M3 is the most uh, commonly used measure of money supply which is also known as aggregate monetary resources or the aggregate money supply. So currently narrow money M1 and broad money M3 are more relevant indicators of money supply in India. Now later on in view of several changes in the Indian economy as well as developments in the monetary sector there were several working groups which were set up to periodically review these monetary aggregates and refine the monetary aggregates. So three working groups were set up. Uh, the first working group on money supply which was set up in 1961. Then the second working group was set up in 1977 and the third working group was set up in 1998 and the chairman of this work, working group was Dr. Y.B. Reddy. So all these four measures of uh, money supply were further uh, refined two new monetary aggregates NM1, NM2, NM3. So let's look at these new monetary aggregates. New monetary aggregates uh, NM1 is currency and coins held with the public plus demand deposits with the banking system and other deposits with the RBI. So this is same as the original M1 money monetary aggregate. The second was NM2 uh, which is NM1 plus the short term time deposits of the residents which includes and add up to the contractual maturity of one year and the third monetary aggregate NM3 is NM2 plus the long term time deposits of residents plus call or term funding from financial institutions. So here uh, NM3 includes the long term time deposits of residents whereas NM2 includes the short term time deposits of residents. This is the major difference between these two new, uh, new monetary aggregates as well as NM3 also includes the call funding from financial institutions. So this was about the monetary aggregates. Now uh, you can go to the website and attempt some of the questions related to the monetary aggregates so that you can better clear your understanding for this particular topic.
subscribe to the channel and prepare 50% faster with i exam b